Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about Google. As we can see over the last year, Google is up 54% while the rest of the market is up 23%. So compared to the other tech companies we've looked at, Google is not really dominating the market as much as those tech companies were like Microsoft and Tesla, but Google is still up a lot more than the rest of the market. And so in this video, I'm just going to analyze their company and look at their financial statements and then also try to figure out what their intrinsic value per share is. So before I get into that, I just want to talk a little bit about Google's business model. For those of you who don't know, but probably most of you do know, Google's revenue comes mainly from selling advertising. Google or Alphabet is a parent company that owns many different businesses, including its popular Google search engine, cloud computing, streaming, and mobile operating systems. Google's business is broken up into three different operating segments. One is Google services, which is their most profitable and largest segment, makes up about 90% of their revenue. Then there's also Google Cloud, and then lastly, Other Bets, which is another one of their operating segments that I'll get into in a second here. Google services generates revenue from advertising through Android, Google Chrome, hardware, Google Maps, Google Play, Google search engine, and lastly through YouTube. Whenever you use Google's search engine, an algorithm generates a list of search results that includes suggested pages from an advertiser using the Google Ads program. Google generates fees from these advertisers when users engage with their ad by either seeing it or clicking on it. Advertisers pay Google to have their pages suggested to users. The payment process is an auction where advertisers outbid one another to get their ads shown on Google. Google also makes money from ads shown on non-Google websites. So when users click on those ads, the revenue is split between Google and the website owner. Google services also makes money from subscription products like YouTube TV and YouTube Premium. So now I want to look at some of the recent news that's come out surrounding Google. We can see right here, this article is titled Google Bard unveils major AI update. Google stock takes flight. They touch on the fact that right now in the tech sector, there's a lot of hype surrounding artificial intelligence and everybody is trying to integrate some sort of a language processor into their search engine for Microsoft. That's Bing. And then for Alphabet, it's obviously Google. Right here, it says they unveiled the biggest upgrade yet to their artificial intelligence assistant known as Gemini Ultra. The upgrade ushers in the next stage in the battle of AI driven chatbots between Google Bard and Microsoft Copilot, which combines the power of Bing search with ChatGPT. Google Bard currently uses the mid-level Google Gemini Pro. Last month, Google announced that Gemini Ultra has begun to roll out in two stages. Earlier this year, Google, or early this year, Google plans to introduce Bard Advanced. This will give users access to Google's most advanced AI models and capabilities starting with Gemini Ultra. So they're trying to invest in AI so that they can keep up with the advancements in AI made by Microsoft so that they can actually continue to stay at the top of the search engine market. Then lastly, right here, a quick little article that touches on a statement made by Google's CEO Sundar Pichai, which is that he announced additional job cuts in order to increase Google's efficiency. So right here, point out some key takeaways. CEO Sundar Pichai reportedly told employees in a Wednesday internal memo that the company plans to cut more jobs in 2024 as it ramps up its investments in high priority areas, such as artificial intelligence. The announcement of further layoffs this year comes after the tech giant slashed hundreds of positions earlier this month across its advertising, engineering, and hardware divisions. So similar to Zuckerberg last year when he cut all those Facebook jobs, right now Sundar Pichai is trying to also cut more Google jobs in order to increase efficiency and reduce operating expenses so they can spend more money in research and development into artificial intelligence so that they can compete with companies like Microsoft and Apple. Next, we can see their financial statements right here. This is their balance sheet comparing 2022 to 2023 on the right here. Total assets increased from $365 billion to almost $400 billion. We can see they have total liabilities of $123 billion and total stockholders equity of $273 billion, 
with retained earnings sitting at $205 billion. Then we can see right here in their income statement, revenue increased from $69 billion to $76 billion. That's up 11% year over year. And net income increased from $13.9 billion to $19.6 billion. That's an increase of 41.5% year over year. So definitely so far for quarter three, that's one of the largest improvements in net income year over year that we've seen from any company we've looked at. So that's pretty impressive growth for Google. Lastly, we can see on page seven, their cash flow statement. Operating cash flow increased to $30 billion in the most recent quarter. And we can see for financing activities, they've repurchased common stock amounting to about $15.7 billion, which is more than half of their operating cash flow for the quarter. So that's obviously very impressive for Google. They're prioritizing returning value back to shareholders a lot through repurchasing common stock which is a very good sign for anybody who's currently invested in Google. Now I wanna look at this DCF model to figure out the intrinsic value per share for their company. I'm using a growth rate of 21% because of the growth from the last five years for their free cash flow. In 2018, they had free cash flow of, 2020, of 22 billion. In 2022, they had free cash flow of 60 billion, which means that historically compounded annually, their free cash flow has grown at about 21% year over year. For the weighted average cost of capital metric that I'm using to calculate their discount rate for this DCF model, I got that from this calculation right here. I basically took their interest rate for their debt, which was about 1.6% as of their most recent full quarter. And then also for cost of equity, we can see right here, I calculated that by adding the risk-free return to their beta value multiplying that by the market rate of return and then subtracting the risk-free return. That gave me the cost of equity of about 10%. They have a debt to equity proportion of around 70% for equity and 30% for debt, which means after taking their equity proportion, multiplying that by the cost of equity, adding that to the debt proportion multiplied by the cost of debt, and then multiplying the debt proportion by the tax shield because debt is a tax write-off, I got a weighted average cost of capital of 7.62% for all of Google's capital, which is what I'm using right here to calculate their discount rate. And we can also see net cash right now is sitting at around $89 billion after subtracting all of their debt, and they have a little over 5 billion shares outstanding. Puts their intrinsic value per share at $344 per share, which means that at the current share price, they actually are trading below their estimated intrinsic value per share. This business is very cash rich, and it looks like their free cash flow metrics are gonna to continue to grow in the future. So based on the DCF model, you probably wanna buy into Alphabet's stock at the current share price because they're trading at $148 per share, which according to this metric is even less than a 50% margin of safety for their company. But keep in mind, this DCF model uses a lot of assumptions, including the fact that it's assuming that their free cash flows are going to grow for the next five years at the same rate that they've grown over the last five years. If this doesn't happen and if their free cash flow metrics grow slower, then obviously that would increase their or that would decrease their estimated intrinsic value per share, which would make Google less of a buying opportunity. But based on these metrics alone, which are based on their historical performance, it looks like right now Google is trading at a very good buying opportunity. Then right here on the right side, I did a competitor analysis comparing Google to Apple and Microsoft. If you want to compare them based on profit margins, it looks like Microsoft has the highest profit margins at 68% gross profit and 34% net profit. It also looks like Google has the lowest return on assets and the lowest return on equity. But in comparison to the other two companies, it looks like Google has the lowest debt to equity ratio and also the lowest PE ratio. So they're not as leveraged as Apple and Microsoft, which could be a good thing because it improves their liquidity and makes it easier for them to grow if they're not constantly making debt payments. But that being said, if they were to take on more debt in the future, maybe they could grow even faster, which puts them at a strategic advantage right here, right here based on their positioning because they're currently not as leveraged as Apple and Microsoft. So it really depends on how you look at it. You can look at it from different angles. Next for their PE ratio, they're trading at 
the lowest PE ratio compared to the three companies. It could mean that right now they're trading at a better buying opportunity, or it could mean that investors are currently estimating that Google is not projected to grow as fast as Apple and Microsoft. So for that metric as well, it also depends on which angle you're looking at it from. But lastly, for their dividend payout, we can see they're the only company out of the three that don't pay a dividend, which is obviously not that good for shareholders, but it could be a benefit because Google doesn't have to continue to release cash from their business. They could keep that cash for themselves and then reinvest back into the company. So based on this, if you're judging it by profit margins alone, it looks like you want to give it to Microsoft, but based on buying opportunity and also which company is trading cheapest while not being as heavy on the debt side, you'd probably want to give it to Google. Then lastly, right here, we can see I'm comparing Google to some of the other companies we've looked at in past videos. In terms of share price compared to intrinsic value, Google was actually trading below their intrinsic value per share, about 42% lower than their estimated intrinsic value per share. So right now that puts them in at sixth place. You can see the companies that are ahead of them, Oxy, ExxonMobil, AMD, ConocoPhillips, and Chevron, one tech company and a lot of other oil companies. Oil companies are obviously subject to change because their buying opportunities increase or decrease based on the increase and decrease in the price of gas, which is very heavily correlated with inflation. So those might move around a lot. But for Google trading at such a good buying opportunity, they could be one of the companies on this list that actually ends up remaining a very strong buying opportunity. Then we can also see the ones that come behind them, Alibaba, Albertsons, Adobe, and Kroger. Next, we can see for a growth rate, Google had an estimated growth rate of around 21%, which isn't good enough to get them onto the growth rate table right here, as we can see. For dividend yield, Google doesn't pay a dividend until had the highest at 5%. For profitability ratios, we can see that Google had a gross profit of around 55%, I believe. Yep which means they're not good enough to get onto the gross profit table. Adobe had the highest at 86%. For net profit, Google came in 10th place with a 21% net profit margin. For Q3 year over year revenue and earnings growth, we can see Google did very well so far. They come in at second place on both tables, 11% on the Q3 revenue table, right behind Microsoft's 13%, and 41.5% on the Q3 earnings growth table right behind Oracle, which was at 60%. We can see right here the Q2 tables. It looks like Google wasn't good enough to stay on the final Q2 year over year revenue and earnings growth tables. And if they were, then it would show that they were consistently beating out the rest of the companies. But as of right now, it looks like they've performed really good on Q3, but not as good as the top 10 companies we've looked at for Q2. And then lastly, on the right side here, I looked at their stock performance over the last five years. Over the last five years, Google is up 172%, which means that they are not returning as much value to shareholders over the last five years as these top 10 companies right here. Tesla had the highest at 850%. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of Google. Leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see everyone in the next one.